community has always been very clear that carbon capture and storage is an integral part of meeting the 2050 target. And it's an integral part because it opens up a range of options. And so generally, as you know, we're relatively agnostic about different technologies. And we're very clear that the job, our job and the job of successive governments is to meet the carbon budgets in the most cost effective way. And, that, and there are a range of different ways in which that can be done. The thing with carbon capture and storage is that it opens up a whole range of options, whether it is the continued ability to use gas through the 2030s and the 2040s, whether it is the continued ability of the UK to host heavy industry and energy intensive and carbon intensive industry, whether it is the continued ability to heat we're using gas or to, in fact, use biomass consistently going forward and how that contributes to carbon budgets. So CCS provides an option on all of these things. There's no guarantee that CCS will actually deliver, but because of its importance in guaranteeing the option, it's important that we experiment with it, that we do the innovation, the research and the development in order to, in order to see whether CCS can deliver. And the importance of the two projects that were still going through the competition um, a few months ago is that they were the vehicle by which we were going to understand whether carbon capture and storage can deliver at an acceptable level of cost to help the UK and indeed the wider world deliver on its carbon objectives. We don't have that now, and now the government needs to set out what will be the vehicles and the mechanisms in order to, uh, in order to understand whether CCS can deliver and indeed how CCS can deliver. So we, I certainly think that it can meet the fourth and the fifth carbon budget without CCS. And in our scenarios and in our modeling and in the recommendations we've made around the fourth and the fifth carbon budgets, CCS was playing a relatively small role. And there were always scenarios that didn't have CCS that showed it was achievable and affordable to meet those carbon budgets. What does become clear though is what happens after the fifth carbon budget, so from the mid-2030s onwards. And from the mid-2030s onwards, it becomes very expensive, based on the current evidence base that we have, very expensive to meet subsequent carbon budgets and the 2050 target without CCS. And so, for example, if you don't have CCS, then you really need to virtually completely decarbonize your transport sector and completely decarbonize your heating sectors in order to deliver on the 2050 ambition without being able to benefit from the CCS. And you get into very, very expensive things that might have to be done to reduce emissions by that amount. Um, it's always, as you'd imagine, you know, the, the last 10, 15% of emissions are the very expensive ones because they're the ones that have been left to the end in order to eliminate. And uh, the 2050 target, the 80% target, allows every sector to keep that last 10, 15% of emissions and therefore not do the really, really expensive things. But if you don't have CCS, then you're going to have to ask some of those sectors actually to figure out how to eliminate that last incremental bit of emissions. And that becomes very expensive. And, uh, and that's the option, those are the options we're left with if CCS doesn't deliver. 